So some of the tools, as you start to uh, illustrate, you have the ellipse tool, just like the other options for it. If you create the circle, it'll use the default that you had set up. You have a fill and a stroke, and they work a little bit differently. When you click on the inside, it grabs that image and still has your uh, stroke separately. So it's a couple different ways to, uh, to illustrate that. So if I do it again but take off the stroke, the color palette comes up, shows the hexadecimal color here, gives you the transparency, gives you a wide range of colors plus some fills. So I'm going to just go ahead and grab a, a fill for this, for the fill, not the stroke. I'm going to turn the stroke off. Okay. And now when I draw this uh, shape, you'll see it has that, that tongue. Now the only trouble with it is that you can't see the um, color, so if I give it a different fill, I'm going to go with a gradient. And again, there's a paint bucket tool right here, and wherever you click on that, it's going to fill that piece uh, connected there. So it's a little off-center, which is good, but that's going to be the part that you want to, uh, to animate. <coughs> okay, so up along your timeline, if it's, it gives you the markings in seconds, I'll just come out to three seconds, and you, what you do is you right-click on it, or you insert. So there's a insert a frame or a keyframe, and it spans the in-between frames all the way across. So if I play this, you won't see anything happening, because both keyframes are the same. But if I highlight down here at this keyframe, and just select this piece with the selection tool, and just move it over, and hit return, then it'll go all the way there until it comes to the end and it'll jump over because all the in-between frames are the same. And the keyframe uh, copies the first frame that's on to the left of it and puts it right in front of that uh, section so everything is copied behind it. But um, just to show, if you right-click on this again, it shows the classic tween. And in order to do this, the image has to be converted to a uh, symbol, so it'll automatically do that. And you'll see this little purple selection with an arrow that shows that now you have a sliding section. It's not frame by frame. It's using the tween section. So in between is being animated by the computer. Okay. And if you click on some of these, you'll notice that the properties show up over here. And uh, I'm going to zoom in over here. So if I rotate this, I can move clockwise. And... Uh, See if I can zoom back out of there. And it does have a number. It's just going one time, so I'll just hit return. And it'll take that distance and rotate one time all the way through. And you have the option to, to change that. So I'll just put it at three. Get back to three. So there it is, three. So it's a long, three seconds long animation as you see that. And you can adjust this. You can uh, move it back down. But make it go a little faster, that type of thing. But that gives you at least a little bit of the, the animation. If I move any of these up or across, you see it rises to that path, so the keyframe follows itself to that section. And anything, if I want to put any background to this, just creating another layer. And if you're not uh, in the habit of labeling these, a good idea is to start, start that now. And again, there's the rectangular shape, so I'll just make a very simple, simple piece here if I can. This inside here. So I'll just go ahead and make a blue. So I'm kind of making it like a bleed, just going over the edge of this piece. Different color. I'm just putting it on the top of that piece. So the stacking order, I'm just going to re reverse it. So now I have the the shape on top of that piece. And every piece that you animate, you want to give it its own layer. And in this case, I'm going to put the part that has the layer on it here. So now it's having that piece. And it does expand all the way across that piece there. And as it comes down to this end, I said you can <clears throat> you click in here, it'll take it to move it a different different position. So if I drop this down here, like right here, for example, see this still part going across, takes that section. I can just click and drag and it'll act, actually put it right into that, that piece. Now 
I'm writing today. So it gives you a kind of crude animation, but that's exactly what's happening to it. And if you have this uh, layer where you can see what's happening on these parts or pieces, this is where you would put a mask. <clears throat> so if I take a rectangular shape, put it on to that piece, and put it on a new layer here. It'll give it a masking layer. Now when I put this across, this part just kind of sinks right into the So just kind of a simple, basic beginning. Um, and that's kind of what's happening. This one, just a little bit, dropping that in there. And the part that has this, the golf ball bouncing, is it still has brought over from Illustrator its uh, clipping path. So you want to take it into Photoshop or Start. But if you just did it with just the uh, illustration tools in the animation software it makes it a little bit easier to, to bring that up. And if you have this, you can edit this as a symbol. And take a look. This is the uh, part that you have. So this one you can edit that and change in the colors from it. But again, just a, a basic beginning, taking a look at it. <coughs> 